What's going on, guys? And welcome to another episode of Nerds of the Roundtable. We have a great episode for you today. Hopefully. Uh, what do you mean, hopefully? <laughs> if all goes as planned. <laughs> if we don't get too drunk. I don't want to boast too far ahead. It's gonna it be, should be a good, it's gonna be acceptable. We'll have a good conversation. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be good. At it'll least, be good. At least a par, I'd say. As long as we're not subpar, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, we got some news, news, and some more news. Yeah, it's gonna talk some tech. Just talk to hang some out, tech. Have a beer. Uh, yeah. Maybe a couple beers. It's be good stuff. Yeah. So uh, join us as we dig deep mm-hmm. into Nerds of the Roundtable. Cute. Ah, uh, yeah. Doing work. Pretend to type, pretend to type. I mean, hey, guys. All right. So, so professional, so prepared. What's first, beer? Beer. Beer. Be- oh, obviously. <laughs> of course. Come on, son. <laughs> All right. So what we got here, you picked this bad boy up. Uh, you picked both these bad boys up. All right, so first Talk. we have a Kern River Brewing Company. Hmm. Uh, it is a double red. Yeah, Imperial. called Dirty Hippie. Imperial red. Yeah. Uh, never had it. Looked interesting. So I've, I figured I've never I'd even heard of an Imperial red. I've heard of Imperial whites, yeah. Imperial stouts. Never heard of an Imperial red. It's from uh, Kernville, California. So we'll see. Hmm. Don't know where that is. Somewhere. We'll pop her open. We'll try it. Uh, so while that is happening, uh, quick side note: we will be. The mic. Let's see if we, hear this. <sighs> we will be attending the LA Audio Show here oh, in next two weeks, three weeks, first of June. Uh, hopefully, have maybe daily coverage. I was just kind of like doing, just talking shit. Uh, I was some. Some pictures and whatnot. We'll do a little podcast on that. That'd be cool. Uh, we got a couple new series that we're launching on the podcast on the mm-hmm. YouTube channel exclusively. Uh, we're going to be talking. I started one called DSP, which should be interesting. Uh, check out the uh, the video on that. There's a little introductory video, which is episode one. A few prelies. Uh, we are going to talk DSP, DSP structure, the different blocks, how they work, what are compressors, gates, limiters, gain controls, how to set up your gain structure, uh, what is invert, when you see that button, what does it mean, you know, that that type stuff uh, we're going to oh, talk God. about. It's going to be cool. So it's not. I'm, I apologize for this one. The head on this is it's okay. unacceptable. It'll, it'll go down. It'll, it'll go, go down. down. Just don't look at it. It'll go down. <laughs> Just <laughs> don't, Grandma, pay, don't pay Grandma. any attention to it. <laughs> Grandma, go down. Go down. <laughs> um, so, uh, and it, it not only applies to both professional AV people, but also people that just want to understand no more because it'll people that run live sound for your, a church or concerts, people that work in recording studios, people mm-hmm. that install this stuff professionally professionally it's all going to be different uh situationally but you know in a studio you have a physical piece of gear that's a compressor i have a block on a piece of software same controls that is a compressor yeah it's the same thing just i can show you in a piece of software what it looks like what it what your different controls are what it does etc uh and you can see and i can show you how it works and so the introductory video to the session is up on the web, up on YouTube, along with the first kind of the episode two, which mm-hmm. we talk about inputs and outputs, how to set your gain, what the different buttons are, mm-hmm. uh, and different levels and stuff. This stuff comes in. Yeah, so it's going to be a pretty legit tech series. Oh, yeah. This one will be, yeah. It'll be the legit stuff. Like, in this first one, we talk about... Uh, Mic level versus consumer line level versus pro line level, different mm-hmm. voltages they come in at, and why you have to set your input gain voltage correctly, and you also do. your output voltage correctly. Uh, Indeed, because there's stuff down downstream that matter too. So uh, we have that coming up, 
And also, you were starting something now, Sean. Yeah, what are you starting? It's a little, a little something, something. I feel like there's a little bit left, but I destroyed that beer so much that it's I okay. can't pour the rest of it. Oh, I don't want to fix it and drink some. Because you just want to let me revel in my humili- <laughs> humility. It's quite a head on it. I know it's like frothy. I know it looks like a like a shake of some kind, like a like a float. I think it's that's a that's a tight head. It looks weird. Here, we'll we'll, we'll like taste it. it. You can pour the rest in it in a second. Oh, this looks. I like the color on it. Yeah. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, you guys can see that. You can see that. Yeah. See that ridiculous head on that. Oh, on that nice terrible goldy pour. goldy brown. It is. Ooh. These etched glasses keep it that carbonation flowing too. Good old Sammy mm. glasses. Smells good. Yeah, it's on your nose. I know. I know. <laughs> I want to save it for later. I really mm. got in there. Hmm. Oh, that is good. Oh, I like that. Hmm. Very interesting. You guys have not done me very wrong, good and way. it tastes strong. What is, what is the alcohol content on this? I feel Enough. a burn. <laughs> it's got to be eight. 8.5? Ooh, look at that. 8.5 is not much. When normal beer is what, like four? Four and a half? Like water beer. Yeah, yeah like four and a half. Most of the general ones are, uh, what, five and a <laughs> half? Like general, like browns and stuff are yeah, five no, and a half. Once you've had a beer that's like a 14, <laughs> that's that's where it's real. Yeah, that's where most stones are between 10 and 12-ish range, depending on which one. Yeah, I think uh, Sam Adams Imperial White, which I've never been able to find in years, was like a 14 or a 15. Yeah. That had an actual alcohol burn to it. Yeah. It was pretty intense. It yeah, was crazy yeah. good, though. Yeah, barley wines, I feel like, are like that, too. They can They can have that burn a little bit. Uh, I highly recommend by Nerds of the Roundtable, uh, Kern River Brewing Dirty Hippie Imperial Red Ale. Yeah, thanks, Kern. Look at this yeah. bottle here. Always looking for people to support the podcast in both financial and materialistic ways. All right. Oh. What's that? Uh, they're reading. talking about the merit of Summit Hops. Mm. Which are earthy, pungent, and high in alpha acids. Hmm. Interesting. So you're nice. starting a new series, Sean? Yeah, so I will do just a little video series while mm-hmm. uh, Eric handles the audio side of things. Um, but probably, you know, it's... um. Probably targeted more towards just normal... People not as in depth or techy, more of a basic, yeah. um, just video calibration. The settings on your TV, what do they mean? Mm-hmm. So just like contrast, brightness, color, all those basic TV menu settings that are there that a lot of people never touch. Yeah, um, just what they are, how they work, uh, which test patterns you should use, which e- with each, mm-hmm. uh, so you get a. Uh, pseudo decent calibration out of your TV. So it once you it's tough to do yourself since you've never seen a calibrated TV. So you don't really visually know the benchmark you're going to. But with the right test patterns and using the controls and just understanding how they affect each other, you can get, you know, decent results towards what would be a full like professional calibration. So probably like seventy five percent of the way there, I'd say. So you're gonna do it uh, like a couple different ways. Like, are you going to do it uh, with your more analog traditional way and then use like an actual calibrator? Or you can just mm. do it by eye. We will see. Okay. We'll see. There's some planning involved there. Yeah, we'll that's break true. it down. So we'll have that probably, what, in the next couple of weeks? Mm-hmm. At least have something out. A little yeah, introductory. We'll, we'll get those series started yeah. for you. If you guys have uh, ideas for things that you want to see, little educational series we're gonna do stuff like this uh periodically to have mm-hmm. you guys something different uh let us know reach out to us you can contact us 
on our website, nerdspodcast.tech. That is true. That is the correct website this time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, good job. <laughs> Facebook, Nerds of the Roundtable Podcast. You can reach us there. YouTube comments. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we respond pretty quickly. Uh, <laughs> as long as I'm not, you know. Yeah, so there'll be some cool little videos from us in the future. Yeah, it'll be some good stuff. Yeah. And we've got... Educational. Uh, a couple more reviews I'm sure we're going to work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, working on our editing skills, definitely. Ooh, interesting. So, yeah. real quick, uh-huh. uh, speaking of, re- of reviews, Razor Ripsaw? Ripjaw? Ripsaw? Ripsaw? Ripsaw, probably. I Ripsaw. Um, so, I hooked it up, got it, went to go test with it, hooked mm-hmm. up my PS3 directly. Yeah. I uh, got an HTCP error. Really? Um, yeah. Wait. Yeah, HTCP error. Um, which I got to do a little research. And apparently... Um, I know there are flags. Like, I know at least for the Xbox One, if you, like, uh, Blu-ray playback on the Xbox One is done through an app. When you turn on the system, by default, it can't play Blu-rays. You download an app that's a Blu-ray player that then lets you play Blu-rays. Uh, but supposedly, I'm pretty sure I remember that if you download the app to play back, play back Blu-rays, then it turns HDCP HDCP on on the output. Oh. If you never download that app, it never has it because it's just games. So it might be the same on the PS3. I'm going to have to do some research to see exactly why and how it handles it. Because uh, games and menus should never have it. But I've used my PS3 for 3D Blu-ray playback. Uh, that's how I've watched 3D Blu-rays before. Yeah, and that's where I. it's been so long, and so I may misspeak. So I apologize now, Internet. Uh, but I feel like the PS3, that was one of the things that people had mentioned was that the menus and stuff were everything was hdcp uh they were people were joking because they were so proud of their menus that they didn't want anybody stealing it really hmm it and that may it has been it has been a long time since stuff like that's ever been like brought up uh so just side note yeah, I need to look into it because there's also in menus they have histories of Blu-rays that I played. I might yeah. have to like clear history or information yeah. about I'm sure playing you can find Blu-rays. Something. I'm sure there's some way to get around it. It shouldn't output copyright. Yeah, uh, or maybe I'll just have to hook directly to my monitor and start the game, then go into the capture card after. Yeah, uh, so I'll find a way to do it. But uh, I'm gonna be doing what I have. I have the Sly Collection. Uh, so Sly Cooper, like uh, and the Thievius Raccoonus, mm-hmm. like a uh, action stealth like old PS3 game with okay graphics. It's kind of targeted towards like it's probably younger teens, but good game. Never played any of them. I'm gonna start playing that on Twitch to test out that ripsaw. So I'll have the full kind of hands on. See if it crashes. See how the frame rate is. See if there's noticeable compression. See just like how everything works with it and should have that review up uh, hopefully soon. Nice. Yeah, once I get that tested. So that's coming. That's exciting. Let's see here. What else we got? Let's see here. I, I think that that's going to be great because uh, that will definitely apply to uh, our, our consumer viewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're also going to do headphones... Preamps, yep. headphone amplifiers, headphone Ooh. types. What I also want to do with this thing, too, just for ideas for people, is um, once I have a real camera, I'm going to use it as a USB interface to do like a pure HDMI out of like a. I'm looking at the Sony A6500. Mm-hmm. So I'd be able to do HDMI, I, HDMI out of that into the capture card and use it as my webcam. So instead of having my little cheap Logitech, I'll have a yeah. freaking glorious. 6500 oh, looks so good as my picture in picture image yeah. for Twitch which will be super legit. I could recommend that highly for people on the, Twitch. The only thing you have to look at is the uh two things. One two things. Uh okay. I know for my DSLR there's a specific battery pack adapter that has a power cord that comes out. Do you say your battery doesn't die? It's basically just an Straight AC adapter. Through. Yeah. Um and if you're not recording something, it may automatically turn off. 
Mm, interesting. So, just something to keep in mind. Well, I know it has like a pure HDMI out specifically for external recorders, but I don't know if you actually have to be recording for it to output to have like a secondary recording. And, well, and that's where like our Sony will, if I'm not recording something, it will automatically turn off. Hmm. You can probably turn that off. Yeah, in a setting menu yeah, somewhere. Yeah, just that's something that you just got to take yeah, a look at. Yeah, the other thing that will be interesting is um, the A6500 and, like, say, the A6300, like Sony's APS-C cameras, uh, they do end up overheating. Re oh, yeah, I've seen So that. they have a heat threshold. So well, like, if you're not uh, recording. Yeah, that's the thing. That uh, If you're not recording, then, like, typically I think the heat threshold is supposed to be, like, an hour of recording. So if you're recording internally, you can only oh, do it for about That's an more hour. than enough. Yeah, it seems really long actually. I think standard it's more like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but you yeah. can raise the heat level in menus uh, to make it last longer. Yeah. Um, but the pure HDMI out should be just, you know, just set it up, HDMI out as long as the camera doesn't time out, it should just output video. Yeah. And then shouldn't overheat or anything. Be interesting to do some research on that. I'm looking forward to it. That one's going to be cool too. That one's in the pipe. I'm sure. Yeah, that that will be a cool review. Um, I'll be watching that. Yeah, we're also gonna do <laughs> before that one. Like when I'm actually buying the camera, we'll talk cameras. You know, talk. Uh, oh, that'd be cool. Micro Four Thirds versus APS-C a, versus full frame. Talk about lenses. Have and, a back to back to that one. Yep, which is basically comparisons to what's on the market because there's stuff like the GH5 and some other smaller cameras that aren't full frame but are very capable or setting up the full frame and what you get out of it and all that fun stuff. Sony came out with a new, like, uh, the A9, I mm -hmm. think. That one's supposed to be pretty badass. I think, uh, like, the FPS on that is insane for that A9. It shoots, like, it's, like, 15 or 17 FPS, but for, like, a minute straight. It's like fucking stupid, which is pretty badass. That's pretty awesome. Ew. I also want to thank everyone. Oh, thanks, everyone. That has been watching our YouTube channel and watching our YouTube videos. Uh, I'm actually pretty surprised at that, that. Our bright sign video. The first review that's, I did. That's the number one. That is number one. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> not not too bad. Uh, so, and right now it is our bright sign and this is, uh, watch time minutes. It's the bright sign. Our podcast, our last podcast, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Logitech Brio, your headphones, and then our episode two of the DSP educational series. Oh, already. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, low number of views, but hey, it's only been out there. We're a small, small channel. Uh, so join us. We there. got big heart, small channel, big heart. It takes time, you know. Yeah. Once we get there, you know, because we we look to you guys to give us what what are you guys looking for from us, and we need your feedback. If you guys have questions, sometimes we know too much. <laughs> And sometimes we we just seem like we know it, but we really don't. That's true. I'm really good at bullshitting my way out of anything. I know. I've seen you in anything. front of customers before. <laughs> oh yeah, easily. I have uh, I have strong false confidence. So I was having a conversation the other day. We're we're gonna jump to Pro A V for a second. For a second. Quick second. It's about speakers, it's nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Um but we had I had a client that was looking for a, a speaker that was loud. He has a really nice area that's really nicely designed, can, uh, a lot of wood and stuff. So I'm like, I need something small. I don't want something big and obtrusive, but it has to be loud. Hmm. And so I was like, okay, what, what can I do? And so I had between Tannoy, a nice hmm. little like dual like six inch and then or no dual five inch and then this company called view audio technic that makes this dual four and a half inch okay and but the the view audio technic was i'm trying to remember his the customer cost was like 125 dollars each 
That is did 112 huge. DB. Oh. And that's long term. What? Not like <laughs> instantaneous. Uh, and I was I was talking to her rep because actually our rep for both View and Tano is the same guy. So I asked him, I was like, okay, so what what would be the difference between these two? Because mm-hmm. obviously, other than price, there's got to be a difference. He's like, aesthetics a little bit. Mm-hmm. Quality to components is probably the bigger thing. He said, if you're looking for something that's outdoor rated for a long time, that has better low frequency drivers and stuff like that, Tannoy would outperform it in the long term. Yeah. But if you're just looking for something that is cost efficient but still sounds really good, the view speaker is the way to go. Hmm. And I was like, okay, well, the rest of the space has Crestron ceiling speakers. He's like, go view. Don't <laughs> spend the extra money on the Tannoy. Just go view. I was like, all right. So... Stuff like that is really interesting to have these conversations with the the people that spec this gear, the people that represent the gear, and compare these two brands. Because (laughs) Tannoy is more of like, they don't do big line arrays and stuff like that. They have smaller Mm. speakers. They have some some bigger stuff, but... Yeah, they have like a a luxury level consumer brands, like high-end consumer level speakers. I think they have... You is like... Performance outdoor concerts, yeah. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Tanoi, I think, has a super tweeter. Have you seen their super tweeter? I haven't seen theirs. I've seen super tweeters before, though. Yeah, it's like that little round, like gold box. Yeah, super tweeter two. It goes up to like, it goes up crazy high, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Let's, let's let this load. Yes, there's a super tweeter. And it hits. Do they even say? They don't even bother to say. What it actually hits? Seven hundred watts peak power. What no, on a tweeter? No Jesus. frequency response. Well, while you're looking that up, yeah, it's at least forty k. Uh, I was looking. I was. I was went to a job site. I I can't see who the client was, but they had some nice Powers and Wilkins. Uh, I think it was eight hundred series towers. Did they have like the Nautilus, like mm-hmm. like the big long tube on the back of the tweeter? Yeah. Were they very round or were they straight towers? They they were pretty straight. So they weren't the big like they weren't shaped like this. They were no, more straight. They were more they still straight. Had the cylinder. Yeah. I think it's like the eight oh one is that one? I know the eight oh four D is the one that has like the big, like very round yeah. structure. They had all Bowers and Wilkins like in wall uh, subs, in wall speakers. They had Class A amps. Is interesting. It's and Class A is the brand. It's spelled classy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So it's probably not this one. It was probably uh, is that guy that one. Yeah. Oh, those are really nice. I think it's the 803. Yeah. I think it was that guy. Yeah. I think they use these at Skywalker Ranch. Oh, nice. That's like where these things get. Uh, yeah, probably the 803. Yeah, it's either the 803 or 802. Yeah, those are uh, nice speakers. I don't know. It may have been the 800s. Because it was pretty big, like width wise. Yeah. Yeah, those are a lot of people's dream speakers. Uh, so it it was diamond, a nice system. diamond tweeters on those bad yeah. boys. It was a nice system. I I enjoyed seeing it, uh, walking around their campus and seeing all the different spaces that they have. It was pretty cool. Uh, it was cool seeing those speakers. Unfortunately, the person that had tuned the room, uh, hadn't done the best job in the world, and they didn't. They sounded cheap. <laughs> sounded cheap. I knew they didn't. They didn't sound like that. So, uh, ooh, there it cool. is. The, uh, Tanoi Super right. Tweeter, 62 kilohertz. Wow. Why? That's what I thought. There's a reason, I'm assuming. <laughs> There's 60, a reason 62 somewhere. kilohertz, unbalanced output, negative 18 dB to 100 hertz. So 
from 100 to 62,000 hertz. Wow. Ooh, I feel like that would make you sick. Probably. Like you would feel something is off. Yeah, like your eardrums bleeding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But there's like a lot of, you know... Um, infrasonic stuff that affects you physically. Yeah, that I are get above that. your hearing range and yeah. are very interesting. Yeah, or it's like seeing speakers with like rear-mounted tweeters that do like soundstage type stuff. They do yeah. like walls yeah. of sound. As if tweeters are very interesting. They are very interesting. Is it, audio is a very interesting science? Yeah, and it's hard because there's there is a fine line, and we'll. This is something we'll talk about during the audio series, either within the DSP uh, and within when we talk about headphones and stuff, mm-hmm. is there's a difference between perceivable difference and measurable dis- difference. Oh, yeah. Because just because you can measure it doesn't mean you can hear it. Uh, I also have a conversation with a buddy of mine about the difference between uh, sampling rates and Nyquist theorem. I was like... Sure, I've got something that can sample 192 kilohertz. Does it matter? No. <laughs> because that just means that it can reproduce sound all the way up to... What's 192 divided by 2? I don't even know. 192 divided by 2? 96. 96. That's 96K that it can reproduce audio up to. Yeah, that's useful, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, And that's exactly why 40... 44.1 or 48 kilohertz yep. was chosen is it's uh 24 yes 24 kilohertz uh, Which is, above is where the drop off was and yes. our human hearing's 20k yeah and that's when you're bored yeah when i think by the time you're like 15 you're typically down to like 19 yeah uh it continually draws most people only hear up to like 17 uh i know what was it like uh it had to be like six years ago. Uh huh. I think six years ago. Uh, so when I uh, worked at Extron, I had to have like a physical mm-hmm. to go in for yeah. whatever reason. Uh, and they actually did a hearing test. Really? Yeah. They put me like in a in the booth, put headphones on me, basically push a button every time you hear the tone, and they continually like play at different tone levels. Twenty to twenty. There you go. And I've played drums my entire life without earplugs. And somehow, measurably, 20 to 20. There, there are some times where... I don't understand. <laughs> Just magic. I'm just a magical being. But generally, for mere mortals, you lose 20K at yeah. you know, 12, 15. Yeah, I'm like 18.5. I think what mine's down to, yeah. which isn't bad for, That's not bad. I've seen kids that are like 17, 18, that are like down to like 15. I'm like, fuck, what have you been doing? Ooh. Uh, let's see here. That can be bad. Yeah, it can be. But luckily, I love audio. I understand it. it's hard. Yeah, we'll definitely dig into it. Just don't <laughs> worry. Uh, let's see here. HTC. They have oh, an that's announcement. One for me. Yeah, so that 11U, the actual. So HTC came out. I'm okay, podcast. So I buy HTC phones. I have for a long time now. So I've had the HTC Evo 4G, um, the Evo 3D, the HTC M7. And then I went from the M7, I held on to that for a long time, uh, to the A9. Uh, which is basically like an iPhone clone. Um, but the HTC 11 is the new phone that they're going to be announcing. Well, the HTC U11, because the HTC U Ultra came out. Mm-hmm. And it's it's pretty, but it's kind of terrible. Do they have renderings or anything in the new phone yet? Or just... uh, there's been a leak, but the leak really looks like the U Play, which is like the UK like mid-ranger. Yeah. So we're not 100% sure yet. Uh, but we know spec wise, it's going to be Snapdragon 835. Okay, it'll be a 5.5 inch screen with 2560 1440 display. Okay, uh, new Sony sensor that's kind of one refresh above what's on the Pixel right now. All right, so people are expecting the camera to be amazing. Um, well, define amazing. Uh, better than iPhones. So a uh, five year old phone. 
Yeah, basically. Those <laughs> I losers, tease you, iPhone users. Those losers. Um, I wouldn't go that far. So they're hoping, well, hoping that the camera will be decent. I mean, a lot of done processing. Um, so that's like something that Apple does really well is they use Sony sensors, but they their processing and the way that they handle their camera, yeah, uh, the speed and the things they do in software, that's where all the value is. I mean, uh, sensors do make up a huge difference, but like Sony uses their best sensors on their own phones, yeah, and their phones, I mean, the, their results of their images are actually really crazy good, but their actual software and the speed of their phones and the speed of their cameras and their ability and no to one uses photos, a Sony camera or uh, Sony phones. Yeah, yeah, their phones are struggling. I mean, they're generally they look good though. They're really good. Uh, their screens are not great, and they're really that's surprising. I know, I know. Uh, maybe that will change since they've got a pretty good relationship with LG now. No, that's true. But yeah, so hopefully, the camera will be amazing. But um, what people are excited for, well, I was excited for, which I'm now less excited for, um, is a touch sensitive bezel. Yeah. So it's supposed to be the bezel of the phone you can squeeze or touch to do different actions without actually pushing buttons. Uh, I was there was a it's kind of like a research video posted months ago uh, that showed the phone with a only touch bezel, so no power button, no volume up or down, just touch sensitive bezels. If they come out with that, it's going to be freaking incredible because that's actually like, hey, here's. All the phones that are the same thing, here's something different. And we have a way of making it work, and hopefully it works amazing. But most likely it will have a power button still, will have volume up and down. It'll just also have these kind of bezels, bezel actions that yeah. you could do. Uh, but Snapdragon 835, it'll do you know Google's Daydream VR and mm -hmm. have a good camera and 2560, 1440 screen. So it should be good. I'm probably going to buy it, I'm sure. Because I'm in need of a new phone. I've actually been using my iPhone kind of exclusively for like the last month. And oh, it's, I've struggled. I've struggled. It's been. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's. I've been hurt. Okay. <laughs> I've struggled. I wouldn't say struggled. No, that's not that bad. Actually, um, I won't get into it because obviously everyone knows I'm not a fan um, but the actual apps that run on iPhones yeah. are all incredible. They all run crazy fast, really quick loading. They launch quickly, and the actual app themselves, inside the app, like everything runs faster. I feel like I've used um, Google Play Music for all my music, and I have that mm -hmm. on my work phone. Yeah. The Google Play Music app on iPhone is significantly better. Really? Than the Android app. That's surprising. Significantly. Wow. Uh, I think Google Maps is better on Android than iPhone. They're really close. Oh, really that's, close. That's good. But the Google Play Music app is way better. I had someone bring something up yesterday uh, about Android that they noticed different. They noticed a lot more ads within apps or recommendations oh. to download or buy something could be okay didn't know if that's something that you noticed between iphone and android well they have like skins that can do like um like i can put a widget on my desktop that will do nothing but reckon recommend me apps so it'll just basically be an ad reel that i can just put on there if i want interesting um which is just not on by default but you can do it okay or like on my last htc phone they didn't do apps, but they had like a news read feeder mm -hmm. uh, that would do like promoted sponsored stories. Yeah. So that was their way of doing ads. Um, but you can technically uh, off Amazon, you can buy specific phones that are subsidized and much cheaper and they will put ads on your home screen. Okay. So when you go to unlock your phone, there'll be an ad there um, before you unlock it. So whatever it is, there'll be an ad from Amazon when you turn on your phone every time you turn on your phone. But because of that, they take off like $150 off the phone. And they do it on budget phones. So like, um, say Motorola G4 Plus is like typically like a $280 phone. Mm -hmm. You can get it for like 120 bucks on Amazon with ads. So it allows you to get a good mid-range phone for super cheap, unlocked. Yeah. They just give you ads on your home screen. So I know that is a thing that Amazon does. Well, they noticed that like if they went to... 
<laughs> I'm going to hate myself for saying this. When they go to Yahoo to check their email. <laughs> First problem. <laughs> Just sh- <laughs> we're, First problem. We're not going to go down this hole. Okay. We're not going to just step over the hole. And let's, <laughs> we're going to glance past so this. So when we're on Hotmail. <laughs> okay. I, that was my first email was a Hotmail. It was, was what it? my mom had. Mine was AOL. Was it? Dial up back uh-huh. in the day. Yeah, we, we had uh, Net Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah That's a good one. Yeah. Um, so they noticed that when they logged into Yahoo, like from an iPhone, mm-hmm. didn't really get ads like on the side or pop ups or anything. Huh. But when they do on Android, they get a lot. Like they have to like sit there and wait for it before they have to make it go away or it's in huh. the way. So I was like, huh, that's really interesting. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Google, they're looking at making an ad blocker, like integrated oh, for into themselves. The, yeah, yeah, into the Chrome browser. Mm hmm. Just to block like the ads that they feel like don't meet certain criteria. Yeah. Like, block shitty ads. Yeah. Hmm. Which some people may look at like a non compete type thing. Like, our ads meet this spec. So we're going to block all other ads that aren't us. But we'll see what happens we'll see how far they take Very it interesting yeah i think so um so so yeah i'll get that phone you'll see a review for it i'm sure i'll pre-order cool. it oh that sexy b-roll man oh you know oh, that's it's right. gonna look so good yeah actually the the u ultra that's the one thing for the u ultra as everyone says physically it looks really good i mean it has some large bezels i don't know if i'm really too big of a fan of it from the yeah. pictures that i've seen but apparently in person it looks amazing um, so that's the one positive thing that came out of the U Ultra. So the U should be about the same. So it should look really good. So the B roll should look really good. Yeah. But uh, just the phone in general was just a lot of mistakes. Is the Sony? Does the Sony? What what resolution video does it shoot at? What the sixty five hundred? Yeah. That uh, four K. Four K thirty or four K sixty? Four K thirty. I'm sure. I mean, I'm cool with that. Yeah. B roll on that thing. Fucking like amazing. I know. So when you supposed to have that? good dynamic range too. When are you buying that? Next week? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> we will see. You said you got so much more disposable income. This now. month specifically. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, while you look that up, uh I was checking that. I'm double checking my frame rate because I don't trust myself. I'm interested. And I, I'm sure it's 30. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Alpha APSC. That's off. That's fine. Uh, off of a. I mean, this is an APSC, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm. It's just not. It's, it's not. It's probably a video the same. Cam. It's not a video camera. It is no. a photography camera that takes a video, and there's a yeah. very distinct difference between. But the two. having a, a camera that can do video means you can change out lenses because the only step up from a, a camcorder style video. Mm-hmm. Is an actual like production style camera, which fuck, I mean, that's way out of our budget. Oh. So you have to use DSLRs. So we'll get there a little bit later, but just as a tidbit for you so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 um, was filmed in 8K on the new Red, um, Red Dragon, I think. Yeah, same resolution and stuff that. 10 p 30 Yep. Yeah, for the camera. So you need the same uh, SD card that yeah. I have. But. Keep it that in mind. So I think speaking of those cameras, the new Red 8K is mm-hmm. what Guardians 2 was filmed at. Then yeah. it has a 4K digital intermediate. So it's real 4K in theaters. That's awesome. We'll, we'll talk about that. Don't you fret. Don't you fret. <laughs> okay. don't you fret. Uh, actually, <laughs> speaking of Red, uh, Linus Tech Tips. Oh, Just, I saw. Did you see? Yeah, he the got, red. He got two red um, 8Ks. Yeah, yeah. Check that out on YouTube. Check out my yeah, tech said tips. It costs so much money. He's he's making fun hilarious. of the bill because it, it is ridiculous. Uh, the red weapon. Yeah, weapon 8K. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Fifty grand for the brain. Yeah, everything else though. Mm. If you actually want to record video, yeah. It, oh, it adds up. It adds up quickly. Oh, yeah. Super fast. But you can always go with, like, the Scarlet, which is the smaller one. Yeah. Um, which are good for, like, cheap 3D. Well, cheaper 3D rigs. Like, you do, like, a 3 reality 
um, red rig, uh, which third party rig, but you can do two scarlets and they're very, they're a lot smaller compared to the full on size camera, but they're still 5k. So you can still do like 3d 4k and a scarlet rig. That's still shoulder mounted and manageable. Yeah. And they're not that crazy. I don't think price wise. I think they're more like uh so red weapons like 50k i think the scarlets are more like 20 yeah uh i definitely check out the video i i laugh my oh, ass off awesome. uh so check that out uh microsoft surface laptop yes. that we're talking about yes yeah so they had the surface had the surface book which is still like a laptop for in fact a detachable screen yeah now they're still like all right here we go just a laptop, no tablet involved. Yeah, just nothing fancy. Laptop. Just, but it's still a thousand dollar laptop. <laughs> it's sturdy. Nine ninety nine. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. Starting price is ridiculous. So this is the interesting thing: is this laptop is supposed to be the Halo device, like the premier device for the new Windows Ten S operating system. So the Windows Ten S is an operating system. That you can only install apps from the Windows Store. Yeah, you can't install third-party apps. So really, it's supposed to compete with Chromebooks for schools. That is the main lore of this. The only problem is this is a thousand-dollar laptop. Chromebooks start at like two thirty, and th- that's the main competition. So supposedly, HP, Dell, the main manufacturers will have Windows 10s devices for. $300, $400. They're going to try to compete with Chromebook level pricing. It's just this is like um, like the original, like the Pixel branding from Google was originally for the Chromebook, the Chromebook Pixel. So like the Pixel is like $1,400 and it's a Chromebook. This is basically Microsoft's version of the Google Pixel Chromebook. It is their full-fledged premium version of their new low-cost operating system. So, well, very interesting. Can you upgrade the Windows 10 S to Windows 10? Yeah, it's 50 bucks. I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. Yeah, so 50 bucks, then you can get Windows 10 regular and you can install third party apps that aren't in the Windows Store. But spec wise, it looks very interesting. The reviews, all the hands on, mm-hmm. have been very solid. The screen's really good, it's a touch screen. Um, very thin, very light. The form factor is awesome. Uh, we have integrated graphics, but it's really made to compete with, you know, Chromebooks or like, uh, the smaller MacBooks, like the MacBook air or whatever their small form factor is now. Interesting note. I just saw they're saying that you can switch to windows 10 pro for free until December 31st. Oh, that's really good. So, if you do buy the Surface laptop, you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free until December. Nice. Until the end of the year. Do it. <laughs> Fuck it. Yes. Do it. So, interesting resolution. I really weird resolution, not not going to lie. 2256 by 1504. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, though, that 3-2 aspect ratio is also used on Google's Pixel Chromebook. Really? Yeah, 3-2 has been, like, a dominant, like, netbook-type resolution mm-hmm. for... Yeah. It's mostly for operating systems that are, like, web-based uh, because vertically it gives you more screen real estate. Yeah. So you don't really need to have all this width to view websites because websites are really built. Like, the standard for websites really are to have everything in the center and it's built for lower resolution four by three screens because it has been for so long. So websites don't typically use wide aspect ratios. They just use them to put ads in the sides. So when you have more vertical space, it gives you actual more content to what you're viewing on the web. Yeah. So for like web based laptops, three, two is kind of big right now. Let's see here. So it's got a USB 3.0 headphone jack. Mini display port. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, it does support Surface Pen. Which is awesome. AC wireless, which is good. Yeah. Bluetooth 4.0. And the big thing. 
14 and a half hours of battery video life. playback. Yeah, that's actually crazy. That is, I'm sure it's using their browser, whatever, but. And two and three quarter pounds. That's not bad. One and a quarter kilograms for those not in the U.S. So everyone else. Ambient light sensor for the screen could be which, nice. Which is good. I mean, I would hope so, to be honest. 720 feet, 720p front facing camera. Yeah, just for Skype. So this is this fucking shit. I'm sorry. Uh, Omnisonic speakers with Dolby Audio Premium. So there's some type of so filter they, in there. They have speakers that fire at your face with stuff to try and make small speakers sound better. Do they fire? The, I, I know the speakers are hidden under the keyboard. There's oh, no okay. grill or anything. They're under the keyboard. You know, there's no slots or anything. It's weird. You don't see the speakers. It It's good looking. I'm not going to lie. It is a really good looking you piece know, of hardware. Aluminum building. And they've got the fuzzy top. Uh, what yeah, do you think of weird. the mouse? Uh well, freaking uh, Jacob really likes his arc mouse that he has. He now. does, yeah. Well, isn't it redesigned the new one? Yeah, this is a newer one. Yeah, uh, I haven't really read any hands-on stuff for this one, but I know the Jacob's arc mouse he enjoys. What's really cool is the scroll. The scroll in the middle, it's completely flat, but you can feel it click with haptic feedback, and you can yeah. actually roll it. Like you can spin it and it keeps spinning and slows oh, cool. down. Yeah, it's actually really cool. That's cool. So that's that's yeah, new device. Yeah, well, that's the thing though. That's tough for this. Is I know like I've been super tempted into um, actually Microsoft has an event coming up where they may announce the Service Pro Five. Um, people are saying that maybe it's not. It could be a new device. It's in China, um, but Surface Pro. Ooh. Four is what's out now, but Surface Pro Three, you can get for incredible prices right now because you got a Surface Pro Three, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And the i five Surface Pro Three what? is like, I think it's like four hundred bucks. Like it's amazing. Have you seen this Surface Dock? Yeah, yeah. Proprietary connector. Well, I understand that. Have you ever seen it though? Yeah. I've never seen it before. So it's power, display port, uh, USB, Two display ports. and Ethernet. Yeah, yeah. Surface Dock, two hundred dollars. Yeah, and you can use the uh, Surface Dial with this. Yeah, that Surface Dial is that's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, well, it's interesting as long as you have use for it. Yeah, that that's always the question. But like, uh, I know Adobe just updated all their apps to support it, which is awesome. Yeah, I saw that in a recent update. So that that's the uh, new Surface laptop. Vega rumors quickly. Mm, man, look at all this news. How much news is there? We gotta I know. do these more. We, often. Well, we got kind of slightly. Well, ho- hold on. Before we get to Vega, we gotta pour our next beer. Obviously. All right, so podcast is going to be extended. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Eric, tell us about this beer. All right, so we have a... This is a new one I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Um, Virginia uh, Collection, apparently. Um, um, but it's it's your, your go-to, your it love. It is. It's stone. Stone. Independently brewed. Interesting. Uh, give me stout or give me death. A stout brewed, How patriotic. I know. Uh, a stout brewed with raspberries and blackberries from the Commonwealth of Calif- of wow, of Virginia. Interesting. Brew stowing Richmond, Virginia. Hmm. 9.5 on our scale. So this should be interesting. There's a bottle. An, an imperial on. tribute to Richmond, Virginia and the rise of craft beer independence. Hmm. I'll pop her open. Yeah, this would be good to try. Um, actually, before we go to Vega, I'll talk about Optane real quick while you're cracking that open. Sure. So uh, this is the new Intel, like, uh, 3D X point memory, right? Yeah. So this is them kind of introducing their 3D cross point technology into the memory realm. So they have this uh, memory, solid state memory uh, technology that operates crazy fast. 
compare to even solid state drives of today. It's well, somewhere in between solid state and, hard drives and RAM. And RAM. Right? Well, that is the thing, too, is the longevity is supposedly insane on these, right? Yeah. The read write cycles is ridiculous. The Whoa, speed is know. crazy. Wow, this is dark. Is um, a head on that? With that, a little that, bit of like I saw, I saw the head change color. It started more white and then as it settled it like soaked up beer that's crazy that was intense so uh, I'm, I'm intimidated by this one it's a really fast memory it's stable it has good read write cycles so unfortunately it, it's expensive very uh, and low amount of it, storage it's it's a new technology so what amd is doing to implement it or wow while well, in intel up. I don't know what I'm doing to fuck yours up. Constantly. I don't know. Uh, what Intel is doing to implement it is starting this new kind of integration called Optane, where it sits in between the processor memory and your hard drives, where it acts as a cache, where it uses Intel's learning technology to learn what you use and you know applications, stuff like that. So it can theoretically do things faster, add solid state style performance for those listening on the podcast. I threw up quote fingers, um, solid state style performance on a standard platter disc budget hard drive. Pouring this, it reminds me of like balsamic vinegar. It, it yeah, really does. It is thick. Very interesting. I'm sorry I did this to you again. It's okay. Always fucks you up. I don't know how it happens. I'll pour next time. Yeah. All right. So uh, it comes in two different sizes. There's still some in here. You need a the seventh generation it's Intel memory. Uh, you mean Intel processor? Like the yeah. Core I? Intel yeah. processor. Uh, capable motherboard. I think it's the Z. Is it on the budget? Motherboards? It's probably a Z270, I'm sure. Is it on the budget ones, though? I, I sure hope so. so. I haven't really looked into it because it's it's not realistic to me. Okay. So, Optane is good for budget machines. I'm, I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. I said for budget machines when it's so goddamn expensive. Well, Optane itself is not expensive. It's like 60 bucks for the chip. It's just their implementation with the hard drive that they're using? Yeah. Well, the implementation of Optane itself. Now, the cross point is expensive when it comes to uh, technology itself. So, yes, a full-size hard drive is expensive, but Optane as a, like, 32-gig, 16-gig stick mm -hmm. is not... It's, like, 40, 60 bucks. Because hmm. basically what it's doing... Is I don't know if you remember the hard drives of your the the hybrid drives, where it'd have a solid state cache within the hard drive itself. Yeah, it's basically doing the same thing, but since it's sitting in between the processor and the uh, uh, SATA controller, mm -hmm. it's able to learn a little more intelligently what you're going to be using versus just kind of throwing stuff in the cache before it writes it to the hard drive. Hmm. Uh, so it, I see it working really well on budget machines, stuff that you have a slow, cheap hard drive on. Um, it will copy, it will learn what you open. It actually does improve performance. I've seen benchmarks. Uh, it learns. So I think it's a cool technology it's eventually going to leak into actually having a hard drive, solid state drive type thing uh, that will. It's going to be ridiculously fast, um, <laughs> but it's something to kind of it, it's a cool technology out there. So if you're really looking to cut budget and you can't afford a solid state drive, you can buy like a Western Digital Blue or Western Digital Green. Mm -hmm. um, that's like a 5,400 RPM drive, throw Intel Optane in there, throw in like an i3, um, and you have a, a pretty snippy little computer. 
Hmm. Uh, so it's interesting to kind of look at it. Uh, just take a look, see what you guys think. Uh, let us know if anybody out there is using Optane. It now, if you're using solid state drives, it's not beneficial. Let's be honest; you're not going to notice a difference. Hmm. So it's been educational for me. Yeah, I haven't looked into it too much. I know my kind of scenarios for how I'm using my hard drives, but yeah, no, I'll have to look into this more. All right, so beer. Beer first. Look at how I, f- I screwed yours up again. It's Maybe it's the same glass. Same massive head. I felt like I poured it the same as mine. Ooh, it smells sweet. It smells like stone. They're typical, mm-hmm. like, oh, hop and It's going to be powerful. Oh, that's going to be good. Right clinky, there. clinky. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's like a meal right there. It is. It's like a fine dining meal. Oh. Mm. It's thick, it but like, not. It tastes like meat to me. Kind of I like a that. jerky. I get like Ooh, a jerky from Like it, a teriyaki you? jerky? Yeah, don't you get a jerky from that? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Very interesting. It's got, it's got tanginess. It's got sweetness. A little bit of like almost oaky. Yeah. Yeah, oaky is a good word for Dark it. Dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. A little bit of like nutty, uh, yeah, a little nutty fruity. Yeah, in, in there. For you don't sure. taste like the berries, really. It adds to a little bit of fruity to it. I think. I yeah, feel. like there's like a. But little... I, I definitely get more of like an oak from it. Yeah, like I've made um mm. like a a homemade like syrup from like blackberries or raspberries to oh, put yeah. on pancakes. Oh yeah, and I kind of get that like aftertaste. What a boss! Oh, it's so good. All right. Yeah, I said like a balsamic is what I get. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I got when I was pouring it. And now I like I feel it in my yeah. mouth. Yeah. Oh, so good. Highly recommended. Man, Both we're on a roll. Oh. The only thing I want. No wonder it took so, me 30 minutes. So just because if I can catch up. Remember when I got that um, that Anderson Valley that I that um, we said it was like a cider. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a beer. It actually was a cider. Oh. There was a word on it that. I just cannot pronounce that. I just kept skipping over. Um, that is a class of cider, so it wasn't. Ah. Cider. So it wasn't a beer, technically, ish. I don't know it was a cider, which is why I like freaked right. out. I'm like, it's oh right. my god, this is terrible. But yes, yeah, it might. It was a mix up in my expectations. Yeah, I'm sorry. Anderson the more you Valley. know, the more you know. I love your boot, Amber. We we apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's I found found that out. So. Correction for previous. Yeah. Yeah. This is good, though. I like this it. This is damn good. All right. Oh, so what else are we talking about? We're talking about oh, Vega no. rumors. So this is this one's tough. I don't know. So everyone, this is what is so difficult with Vega is the expectation, according to rumors, based off of the AMD M25, which is their professional part, is that the Vega will have 12.5 teraflops of performance. Yep. Which the new Titan XP, little p, is 12.1 teraflops of performance. So we got to buy that. So Vega is supposed to outperform a Titan P as far as pure compute is concerned. Mm -hmm. Um, The problem... (laughs) is that is a gigantic step up from what they have now. So the Fury X, I think, is more around like 8.5, 8.9 teraflops. I think it's under 9. Uh, and that is what the real successor is here. So the Fury X has been AMD's flagship for a long time now. And then they had the RX 480 and now the RX 580, but those are really midstream dev- devices. They aren't like a flagship level player. But for actual performance of these numbers, they have to make a gigantic leap forward compared to what they did with the Fury X. Yeah. Uh, so that's what's kind of difficult for this is they're expecting 12.5 teraflops of performance. And it's going to be, I think it's, that's pretty hard to deliver for them. So I'm not quite sure where to place it's a my big expectations. Expectation. Yeah. And cuz that Titan XP is a $1200 card. I know. At 12.1 teraflops. So 
if the rumors God, okay i'm i'm going to play we're going to do a couple scenarios well taking those rumors to the actual rumors of the recent benchmarks that is the other side of this is yeah. we all expected all right amd vega is going to be this amazing new architecture that's going to be 12.5 teraflops. Yeah. So it's going to be AMD competing directly against the 1080 Ti and the Titan XP and putting out something amazing. Um, then there's like benchmarks today that put it at about a 1070. Yeah. So that's like barely the, keeping up. Ooh, about that. Yeah. So that is the conundrum. So supposedly. The card that is tested has a, has a specific model number that is equal to an early production sample that was first tested five months ago. That is from what I've read. It's yep. also clocked at 1,200 megahertz. So the expectation based on leaks, again, based on leaks. So AMD just updated their Linux driver that had a render backend that includes all the Vega stuff. So there are lines of text that reference Vega architecture to let us know, all right, it's 4,096 shader processors, it's 64 ROPs, it's 256 render units, and then based on those specifications to hit 12.5 teraflops, uh, the shader cores have to be clocked at 1,570 megahertz. The benchmarks that are supposedly from a five-month-old sample are at 1,200 megahertz. That's the big disparity here in performance is supposedly this is an underclock card. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the newest sample and Vega will compete with the old 1080 and get beat by the 1080 Ti and the Pascal X and maybe they'll just price it at $400 instead of $600. Yeah. It could not compete with the Ti. We don't know, but that's the current kind of, that's the layout. That's the feels so, of Vega right now. What would you do? Would you keep your current card, which you have an R9 390X? Mm -hmm. Would you keep that at a second one for Crossfire? Wait for Vega and understand that it's better performing than the card you have now, but it's not quite, it's, it's basically it's in 70. Yeah. Or would you go 1080 Ti? Well, I can't go 1080 Ti. Well, you could. I, I have a FreeSync monitor. Well, you could. So I don't want to buy a G-Sync monitor because I don't want to pay. Well, you two, don't have to buy two hundred extra bucks just for a feature because uh, they're expensive. But I think for me, actually buying into the 390X is actually pretty difficult because they're expensive. It's yeah. cheaper to get a Fury X than it is a 390X. And yeah. Fury X is way faster. Mm -hmm. So I think go. Crossfire in my setup is out of the picture. Okay. So I'd probably say if it is competitive to a 1070, the price will be more competitive to a 1070, which would mean I can get one and get another one later. There you go. Um, but the thing is, for that 1200 megahertz clock, is people are already pushing the RX 580 to like 1500 megahertz. So people are saying, if we can push an RX 580 this high, there's no reason that the Vega shouldn't come out, be able to have comparable clocks, if not higher. But it's I disagree. But it's but. basically double an RX 580. It's twice the amount of shaders, twice the amount of everything, into one. Because if you use that logic, then uh, the Ryzen should be able to clock higher than the FX series. But the FX series, how the box is clocked at 5 gigahertz. Well, that's because they're like different architectures. Exactly. Vega and still uses like the graphics core next architecture, just an evolution of it. Oh, okay. It's still not a, complete, it architecture. It's not a complete redesign the way that... Ryzen is versus what is oh, okay. Old. I thought it was a complete redesign. For I mean, some it's it's extremely optimized and it has a uh, new features enough to where it could be considered a new graphic core next architecture, but it's still the same structure that they've been using since like 2010. Okay, I think so. It is somewhat mm -hmm. relatable. We'll see. They just we'll have see. a lot more back-end features, a lot of software optimizations, and a lot of new 
hardware blocks on top of it that help yeah. optimize a lot of things. I'll just get a 1080 Ti and set my my frame rate so I don't get screen tearing. <laughs> just deal with it. If I can get 200 frames, I don't care. That is true. <laughs> uh, all right. Quickly, since we are over time. Oh, we are over time. Uh, you have seen Guardians twice. <sighs> In two this, different this, theaters. This is going to be difficult for me to do quickly. We will see. I know. Well, All right. maybe part of this can be part of your video series. A little bit. Like part of the introduction. Be like, okay, here's an introduction to video standards. <laughs> no. Let's talk about this. <laughs> now, this is, uh, this is just me nerdgasming all over this shit. That is how it actually well, is. Well, look away your ear place so we can change your plans <laughs> if you have to. Uh. So... And you've seen Guardians. You saw it, what, Thursday night? Okay, so I saw it Thursday in IMAX 3D. Okay. Then I saw it yesterday, Saturday, in Dolby Cinema, which is Dolby Vision with Dolby Atmos. Oh. Standard. Light. Where was that? That's at the block in Orange oh, or the okay. outlets in Orange, whatever it's okay. called now. AMC 30 here in California. Uh, so AMC Cinemas, there's about, I think there's about 30 total in the U.S. of AMC Prime screens or Dolby Cinema screens. Uh, there's not that many. Uh, they're a little hard to find, but they are dramatically better than everything that exists. I mean, to me, it's it's night and day incredible. So as I saw it in 3D, there are scenes in Guardians two that are made for 3d where mm -hmm. the 3d has an impact and the shot design and everything that's played into it you know all right this is meant to be viewed in 3d and there were those scenes and those scenes were impactful so i'm glad i saw the 3d imax other thing with the 3d imax it just has a variable aspect ratio so seeing it in the imax you'll go from the standard like two three five to one to a full like one three three to one on specific scenes so that it opens up the aspect ratio and you see more image. Huh. Uh, that is also very positive. But as I was in the theater watching this 3D IMAX, I have seen other films in Dolby Vision and there were scenes where I just stopped and thought to myself and I just wished, I'm like, oh my God, this is probably so incredible in Dolby Vision. So as I was in a th good 3D IMAX. I was at the one at uh, Downtown Disney in Anaheim and I was wishing I was in another theater. That is how impactful. This is like 3D IMAX, amazing, huge screen, calibrated sound, and a good 3D image. And I was wishing I was somewhere else. That is how good this Dolby Vision is. So the Dolby Vision for this film is just fucking stupid. Um, I've read a couple other like reviews of the Dolby Vision mix of the how it's color corrected and how everything works. And people are questioning if some of the movie is actually authored in Rec 2020 because it is that type of vibrancy and color saturation and just like this incredible contrast that it doesn't even seem possible to be in the DCI P3 space. And there are a couple scenes that are like that where I'm like, oh, I, I didn't have words. Like, Eric has yet to see this. I have to drag this. I know. I have to drag him to this because he will appreciate this the way that I appreciate this because I am fully aware how dramatically better it is. Mm -hmm. A common consumer that don't see a lot of movies in theaters, like say if you only see a couple movies a year, you know it will look good, but you might not have a reference point of how incredibly better it is if you're not around projectors a lot, you're not used to seeing projected images, you see what you see at home, whatever it may be. Uh, for me, the Dolby Vision presentation looks better than what I have at home. I have that's impressive. the best plasma that's ever been made. <laughs> and this is better. I, I know that sound so I know that sounds cocky. But it's true. It's true. <laughs> so in that perspective, I have something that has incredible contrast and black levels and color quality. And that is what this delivers. Uh, the color resolution 
is also insane. And when I say color resolution, so like um, Dolby Vision in theaters is authored at 12 bit, and the presentation is typically 10 bit 422. Mm-hmm. Um, even Ultra HD Blu rays in HDR are 420 10 bit, and regular Blu rays are 420 8 bit. Uh, this also had a 8K camera system, as I mentioned earlier, recording it, and a 4K digital intermedia, which means all the actual camera footage is real 4K. Uh, all the CGI is most likely 2K, but th- just the color resolution and the detail and everything that's just in the image is just insane. If you can see this, if anyone out there can see this in Dolby Vision, uh, plus it's cheaper than IMAX 3D. I think the IMAX 3D was like 20 bucks. Uh, the Dolby Cinema was like 18, 17, 50, something mm-hmm. like that. So it's even cheaper. Um, it is the way to watch this, and it is incredible and significantly better than anything else I've ever seen. So if you can find one locally, go see it. How was yeah. so the audio was good too? Oh, it's insane it's better it, we saw so, fate of the furious 3d imax okay I'm, it is i'm gonna speak to that quickly it is better than that okay and so i have been to shitty theaters so basically normal theaters <laughs> your average theater i if i'm seeing a movie that i know is has decent audio so an action film like it when or if uh Pacific Rim 2 comes out. Oh yeah. I'm going to Pacific a, Rim Uprising. I am going to a Dolby Theater to oh see my that. Oh god, yes. Because the audio is dramatically better. Dramatically better. Yeah. And um even for Pacific Rim 1, the Ultra HD HDR oh, is love a reference Rim. level disc. Everyone raves about it. Yeah. So good. So if you get a chance, go to a Dolby theater, at least a higher end theater to see these types of movies. It you pay a little bit more, but the experience is you have better audio, they have better projectors, better screens, the places are better taken care of. Um, and especially if you can find an Atmos theater. I mean, I haven't experienced Atmos yet, to be honest. I haven't I'm actually the first time was the client I was speaking of to earlier that had the uh, uh Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Mm-hmm. They had Atmos in their listening room. Hmm. Uh, that was the first time I've ever heard Atmos. It wasn't set up right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get a chance, go see it. Uh highly recommended by us. And we have a lot coming down the pipe here at Nerds of the Round Table. I'm pretty excited about, I hope you guys are too. Don't be afraid to send us an email. If we don't answer, please take it personally because we do answer all emails <laughs> and messages. Uh, send us something. If you have a question or topic you want us to talk about, we're always looking to you guys uh, and what your interests are because it's just, it's Sean and myself. And our mm-hmm. special guests from time to time. Yep. And we don't want to be in our own silo of knowledge. I mean, we'll keep ourselves entertained. But well, we, that's what the beer is for. Yeah, well, then we can reach out and share yeah, with be, the world. Because we want... Be interactive. We want... Because there may be something for us is just something we didn't think about. Yeah, we're in our own little shell here. Yeah. We need to have experiences from the world. I mean, even like corrections. Send us corrections. Even that would be something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys are we've, idiots. What we've about had this? People, oh, I, mean, I wouldn't go that far. But we've had people before like sitting like, oh, well, you know, someone made a comment about the RX series. And like, oh, well, it's the uh, Radeon 10. Series 10. And yeah. It's like, oh, that makes sense. I yeah, didn't actually that fucking that. never think about clicked that. in my head that <laughs> RX was... Like, because my our cards are R nines. Yeah, it's just the X is for the Roman numerical ten. Yeah, I that never Fucking clicked. No, didn't even think <laughs> it. And that's that's why we reach out to you guys. That's why we have stuff like our website that has a form. It's literally you oh, type man, in your name, your 
your question and email and we message you back or we yeah. talk about it on the we'll podcast. Bring it up. Facebook. We appreciate I, it. I mean, comments on the, the YouTube page. Let us know what you guys are interested yeah, in. Give you the we shout We will talk out. on it. If not, we will find someone that knows more than we do. That's true. We have connections. I mean, it's so hard to find those people, Eric. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know. We'll search know. wide and far. Um, and if you guys are interested in me posting po- past podcasts on our website or even on YouTube and just putting like a, a static image, I can do that. Uh, you guys got to let us know. Like we have a really good one on audio. And that is true f- that Nate did in one of our first episodes. Uh, that was like a two or three parter. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and they were like three hours each. Um, Ridiculous. But we covered a lot of stuff. A lot of. We yeah, actually, you took our backlog. I mean, uh, yeah. we have a, a good amount of posting on the website. And then yeah. do, do we have everything available backlog wise on, say, iTunes and play music no, and that stuff? Not on not iTunes. Really, right? Um, I've got them, I think, on the server. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've posted them. Interesting. Uh, just because they take effort. <laughs> and if no one wants to listen, then I'm not going to take the effort. If they're not going to take the effort. Um, oh, yeah. And actually... Let me see how far back we have on... Uh, let's look. Uh, we go back to episode 14. Uh, the VR hour on Google Play Music. Oh, so we wow. have episode 14 through 28 on Google Play Music. It's mm-hmm. a good listen. Just hang out with us. It's cool. We always have beer, obviously. <laughs> uh, just talk tech, talk some topics, and, you know, just whatever's relevant. And even if it's not relevant, just like to hang out. Yeah, that's what we're here for. So, uh, join us. If you oh, guys, like I said, if you guys want to learn, uh, listen to our old ones, let us know. We would be mm-hmm. happy to. Uh, but join us next time. I am Eric. I am Sean. And join us on Thirds of the Roundtable.